Do you want to make sure that you're getting the absolute most out of the plugins, effects, and EQ here in GarageBand? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record and release your best music. Now, while this video is for beginners starting out with GarageBand, if you are an experienced user, you may just pick up a tip or two that is going to really help you with the effects of the plugins here in GarageBand. So let's dive in right now and take a look. When you first create a song in GarageBand, it'll look a bit like this. You have all of your different tracks lined up here. Now, the first thing you can do to get into any sort of editing and mixing is to slide this panel out, and you'll see here that we've got our volume control. We can solo each individual track to just hear that track like this. And we can mute the track so that we don't hear that track with all of the rest of the track. So that's the basics. But what we can do is if we tap on the mixer icon here in the top left, we can actually go into our mixer panel. And this is where we can start really adjusting all of our plugins and effects. Oh, and if you're using a smaller iPhone, your mixer may be in the top right as shown in this example. The song I'm using in this demo is my song Eight Bars of Love, which is just an eight bar, eight track demo. It sounds like this. I've only got eight little bars. So we've got here, we've got a bass, we've got piano, we've got vocals, we've got drums, we've got a whole bunch of instruments here, which we can now manipulate and add effects, add plugins and EQ over here in our effects panel. Let's firstly jump into this piano to show you the basic settings that we have here. So what you'll see here is we've got track volume and track pan. So our volume is pretty self-explanatory. That's how loud or how quiet our piano will be. And then we've got panning, which is how far to the left or the right our piano will be. So let's solo this piano by tapping on the solo button out here. And if we play this back, What we can do is if we want this piano to sit over on the right, we can make the panning go all the way to the right and now it'll be over here. So we can adjust our panning there and you can see here that we've got our solo on. If we take the solo off here, it'll change it there as well. So these two buttons are connected and the same with our mute button, they're connected there. So if you wanted to solo the piano and hit play. Or unsolo. Tell you how much I care. So you've got some basic controls at the top there. So that's all good. But then we've got the next section here, which is our plugins and EQ. Now we've got three controls here. We've got our compressor, which is just a single dial that we can dial in the amount of compression that we want. We have our treble, so we can drop our treble, which is the high frequencies, or we can increase that like so. And we can got our bass here. We can drop our bass frequencies, or we can increase our bass frequencies. So if we wanted a bit more treble and a bit less bass in this piano, we can dial that in there. Let's say we wanted a little bit of compression compression on there as well. Let's solo this and take a listen to what this piano sounds like now. So it's got a little bit more of that high end, a little bit less low end. It's a little bit more airy. So that's a way that we can use the basic settings here with our piano. The next section down here is our master effects. Now these are really handy for adding in master echo or delay and master reverb. So to access these and what type we're gonna use, we can tap the arrow here. And then if we hit these drop downs that we have here, you can see here that we can drop these down and we can select what type of echo that we want here. So I've got a quarter note echo on here at the moment and we can do the same down here with our reverb. I've just got the default reverb, but there's a whole bunch of more different types of echo and reverb. And if you want to learn all about echo and reverb, there's a video linked up the top and in the description that will help you out. So let's dial those back to zero. And what I'll do is I'll bring each one in individually so you can take a listen to what echo and reverb will do to our sound. So we'll hit play, dial up some echo. So you probably wouldn't use that amount of echo, right? You would want a little bit more subtle, but you can create that cool sort of delay sound. Let's take a look at the reverb now. So the difference there is that our echo repeats it. It's a delay, so it'll repeat the sound. Our reverb creates that space. So that's why when you looked at the different types of reverb we had, we had things like cathedrals and chambers and clubs and halls because it's creating a space for your track to go in. And it's actually a good way to actually make all of your instruments sit nicely in a mix is adding in a little bit of reverb. It makes them all sound like they're being played together instead of a bunch of separate instruments being played in a studio. 
All right, so that's all pretty cool, but we're only just getting started here. There's so much more we can do with plugins and effects here at GarageBand. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna tap on the little arrow here, which will drop out our panel. And here we can get much more finite control over all of our different plugins and effects. So you can see here, we've got the compressor, we've got a stereo lag plugin, which is actually an external AU plugin. We'll talk about those in a moment. And we've got our visual EQ. So they're all there and ready to go. Now, if we wanna turn these on and off, we can actually press on the light here so they can all be off and then we can bring them all back on there by tapping on the light. So that's how we control which of these plugins we're actually using. Now, default plugins are cool, but what if we want to actually add our own plugins here? Well, what we can do is we can tap on the edit button at the top here, and now you can see we've got all of these slots. Some of them are filled, so we've got the stereo lag there, we've got Visual EQ, but we've got one, two, three additional plugin slots that we can add new plugins. So if I wanted to add another plugin, I just tap on one of these plus buttons, and then it will let me know all of the different plugins here that I can actually add in. So these are all of my GarageBand effects, and you can see there's a whole heap there, and I've got a bunch of videos which will be linked in the description all about how to use each individual one of these. The other option we have here is audio unit extensions. If we tap on that, these are all of the additional plugins that I've actually downloaded to my iPad. And this is a very cool way to add some new sounds and new plugins. Some of these are free and I've got another video which talks all about the free plugins here in GarageBand and some you do pay for. But once you've downloaded those apps, they will appear here and you can use them. So if I wanted to throw in this one, this delay modulator plugin, I tap on it and there you go. It's now been added into my plugin list, which is very cool. Another thing we can do here, and even more intermediate and experienced users often don't know this, and that is that we can change the order of our plugins. So if we hit edit again, you'll notice that we have the three lines over here on the side. And what we can actually do is say we wanted this compressor to be down here after these delay plugins, and even after our EQ, we can actually move those around. So you can actually adjust the order in which your plugins are processed, and that will impact the sound because it actually processes the sound in the order from top to bottom that you have your plugins set. So once you're done, you just hit done like that and then you're good to go. You can now continue adjusting and editing your sound. Now one plugin that is on every track and you can't actually remove is the Visual EQ. So let's tap on the little icon here for Visual EQ. This is our parametric EQ. So remember when we adjusted the bass and the treble, we added in some treble and we reduced the bass. Well that is linked into here. So any changes we make on that main screen are going to impact this. So let's just show you what I mean. If I now drop the treble up here and say we wanted to add in some bass like that, and now we go done on that one, what this is going to do is it's actually gonna update this back on our original screen. So take a look now, you can see our treble there is down low and our bass is up high. So these will actually link in between your front screen and the visual EQ. Now we've spent a bit of time with the piano here. Let's change up and let's jump over to our audio recorder track. This is our vocals, we're gonna solo it. We can tap on the solo button there, it sounds like this. I've only got eight little bars. To so you can hear that we've already got some processing here. We've got some track reverb, which I've already dialed in here. We've got the visual EQ on here. I've got a little bit of an EQ cut there and a little bit of a boost there. And we've got a compressor on here. Now you'll notice here that to access the settings on each of these, I'm tapping on the arrow there. So I'm dropping down the little arrow and then we can dial in things like our threshold, ratio, attack, gain, and mix on our compressor. If you wanna learn about how to use the compressor in more detail, once again, there's a video that's linked up the top and in the description of this one. So if we wanted to actually adjust our different settings, let's come into the track reverb for instance. Instance. So we wanted to really dial up this reverb. Let's hit play and dial up this wet dial and we'll show you what that does. To tell you how much I love you. Ooh, yes, it's only a so we've got control over how much of these effects and a whole bunch of other settings that we have in here. So you can see that GarageBand is actually super powerful. We've got all of these effects, all of these plugins. Don't forget that we can actually add more in. So let's say we wanted to add in a new one. What we can do is come into here and say I didn't want the overdrive anymore. What I can do is I can tap the delete button here and then tap on delete. And now it's freed up a slot. So if I want to add in a new plugin, let's hit the plus button. Now we can add in the audio unit extensions, any that I've downloaded there, or we can add in the default plugins here by GarageBand. So let's just throw a flanger, just for a bit of fun, onto my voice here, and come back to the start and take a listen. I've only got eight little bars to tell you how much. 
Sounds kind of cool. Yeah, a little bit of an 80s vibe there going on with the flanger or something like that. So you can see again how flexible and how easy it is to get started. And you can turn these on and off as we've shown before. You can mix them to your heart's content and then you can come back to your main screen, adjust your main components here and get your track sounding just the way you want it. Okay, we're coming towards the end here. I've got one more thing to show you and then I'm going to give you a bonus tip here because I know that you want to take things to the next level. Now, one more thing we can do that's related to a is our FX button. So up the top here, you may have noticed we have this button here. And if we tap that on, we get this panel here. Now, this is our DJ style effects or FX. X. I've got a whole video about this, so I won't go into a bunch of detail, but what we can do with this is that we can record a performance of our song by adding in some effects. So let's just show you a very quick demo here. If I uh, make sure everything's unmuted, if I hit record, let's just dial in a quick FX run here. I'm only got Okay, so clearly that's not the sort of effects we'd add in for a track like this. This isn't the sort of track you'd use, but if you're using, if you're creating an EDM track or any sort of electronic music, adding in some effects here can sound cool, especially for things like lo-fi, it can sound cool. Now, where does that put it? Well, if we tap that off, let's scroll down to the bottom. Here is our FX track. So it's been added in there and we can turn it off and back on by using the little power button there if we want that. So I would turn that off for now because we're not gonna to wanna to add that particular effect in here. It doesn't sound particularly good, but it's another option if you want to really add some flavor and you've already completed everything else, you've dialed in your effects, you can then do a live performance, record that and really add some flavor to your final mix. Okay, it is bonus tip time. I've got my organ track here at the moment. It sounds like this. So it's pretty cool, but I wanna add in a little bit of more flavor to this one. So I'm gonna add a plugin. I'm gonna tap on the plugin and I'm gonna hit a plus button here. Now what I'll do is I'll come over to Audio Unit Extensions and I'm gonna use this Cleverb or Cleverb by Clevgram, which is a great little plugin here. There you go, it adds it in. We can tap on the icon there and I can dial in the settings that I want here. So we've got medium hole here at the moment as a default. Let's just hit play. So it's really adding a little bit of additional reverb. So I like that, I'm gonna go with that. We'll hit done. Now, what if I wanted to share this project with someone who didn't happen to have this plugin? Well, no problem. We can use our old friend, the merge function. To use merge, what we do is we tap right here on the organ track, on the actual icon of the organ track. And then we've got all these options. We're gonna tap on merge and it will ask us which tracks we wanna merge. We've just got the organ track selected. We're gonna hit merge in the top right corner. And there it goes, it duplicates our song, it merges that track, and look what it does here, it creates an audio recorder track of that merged track. Now the good news is, it has baked in these settings. So this is a great way if, like I say, you're trying to share this with someone, they don't have that plugin, you can actually bake in those settings to the track and then share it that way. It's also good if you're using a lot of processor power, so if you're getting a lot of optimizing performance, if you do this, what's called rendering out your track, it can actually help with that. So let's just solo this now. Go back to the start and take a listen. The other thing that you will have heard there is that it actually increases the volume. It normalizes the track, which will turn the volume up. But there you go. That is a great way. If you don't have that plugin or if you're sharing with someone that doesn't have that plugin, you can merge it, bake in those settings, and you'll be able to share your track with that sound. So there you have it, plugins, EQ, effects, they are fantastic here in GarageBand and there's a heap more videos including two linked right down below right now that can get you up and running with effects in GarageBand. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner and I'll see you on the next video.